I'm Michael Page, and I'd like to introduce to you Fargo Ratings. These are a game-changing breakthrough in pool player ratings that allow us to rate everybody from beginner to top pro worldwide on the same scale. There are three general flavors of rating approaches. Absolute approaches involve things like skill tests, inning counts, run-out percentages, or run lengths. Subjective approaches involve categorizing players according to a judgment of skill level. And relative approaches involve exploring a connection between the rating difference between two players and the game outcome. It's now generally recognized that the first two are the wrong way to go. The absolute approaches are difficult to apply, they depend upon details of the equipment, and they're notoriously easy for players to manipulate. The subjective approaches generally have too few categories. They're subject to favoritism or the appearance of favoritism. There are committees, sometimes large committees, doing a lot of work. And it's generally impossible to ensure that an 8 or a B means the same thing across cities, states, and countries. Like ELO schemes for chess and other games, Fargo Ratings uses the relative approach. So if two players have the same rating, they're expected to win games at the same rate or with equal likelihood. If they have a 30-point rating difference, like shown here, they're expected to win games in about the ratio shown here, like 9 to 11, 45% to 55%. This is like one game on the wire going to five. A 100-point rating difference leads to a 2 to 1 game-win ratio. And a 200-point rating difference leads to a 4 to 1 game-win ratio. This is a major undertaking and a significant juncture for the world of pool. And CSI, Q Sports International, is driving the train on this. We have other videos that address what the ratings mean, what the rating differences mean, and a host of other questions. Our goal here is to motivate the relative approach to rating pool players and to show you how pool players everywhere can be rated on the same scale. These circles represent two pool players. We get information about how they play relative to one another when they play a game or a match or a series of games. And here's another pair of pool players. We get information about how they play relative to one another when they play a series of games. When this third matchup happens, we not only get information about the new pair, but for the two players on the end who have not actually played one another, we get some information about how they play relative to one another. Now, this information is weak and this connection is indirect. But recognize that in a community, there are many, many such interactions, and collectively, they are not weak, but rather are quite strong. For a given pair of players who have not played one another, there may be tens of thousands of individually weak connections that collectively give a lot of information about how those two players play relative to one another. And here's another community. It could be another continent or another country or an adjacent county. And although the players within each community are rated accurately relative to one another, there's nothing in this diagram coupling the players from one community to the players in another. If it's an adjacent community, you might expect a couple of direct matchups like this, and these are sufficient to couple all of the players in the two regions. And even if they're not adjacent regions, some players from each region will play in a general cloud of coupled players from regional, national, and international events. So the player here on the left in, say, Tulsa, Oklahoma, is thoroughly coupled to another player in, say, Providence, Rhode Island. And when a new player enters and plays a few matchups, he or she is immediately coupled to the whole world. Imagine new players and new games and matches amongst existing players from leagues and tournaments being added to the worldwide database every day. And imagine a massive cloud-based computation starting completely from scratch, considering all players and all matchups that we call ab initio global optimization being performed every day. And though our database of about 1.3 million games is growing rapidly, it already includes players and games from all 50 states, from all 10 provinces of Canada, and from over 100 countries. So there's no longer a need for a ratings committee or subjective judgment about how pool players play. And there's no longer a need to track innings or safeties or missed shots. Expect to see this symbol frequently on promotional materials and look for this graphic. It indicates that the players and matches from this particular event will be entered into the Fargo rate system. So I can look up a player on a mobile app. Here's Shane Van Boning and next to his name is his player ID number. And here's Shane's Fargo rating of 817. Next to that is a small number in parentheses that we call the robustness. This is the number of games that Shane's rating is based upon. If this number is small, the rating is not very firm. If this number is large, the rating is more accurate. 
I can also look up two players or enter two ratings and find fair matchups. Here the player on the left going to nine and the player on the right going to seven is close to a fair or even matchup. I can also look at myself and look up Shane Van Boning and find the discouraging news that my chance of beating Shane in a race to seven is less than 1%. I might want to look at a snapshot of the top 15 players in the world who have played at least 200 games in the system. Or I might be inclined for some reason to look up the top 15 players in the world with the first name of Dan or Danny. Turns out there's about 300 of them in the system. And amongst the top 15, there's players from U.S., from Canada, from Sweden, from Switzerland, and from Great Britain. So what games or matches get included in the Fargo Raid system? Well, for tournament matches, there's a large and growing number. Look for the Fargo Raid enabled symbol. And certainly this includes any of CSI's tournaments that use the CTS Sports tournament system software. There are two ways for games from Pool League to go into the system. One is through the USAPL. This is a match format league system for which Fargo ratings will now be used to determine the matches themselves. Look for a USA Pool League in your area or start one or encourage a room owner or a league operator to start one. The other way is by having your league sanctioned with the BCA Pool League. The new league management software for both the BCAPL and the USAPL feed games directly into the Fargo rate system. Furthermore, if you are a league member through the BCAPL or USAPL, you are automatically a CSI member. One of the benefits of being a CSI member is use of the Fargo rate mobile application. This has been the broadest of overviews. For more information about what the ratings actually mean, what the rating differences mean, and how you might get involved, please visit FargoRate.com or PlaySCSIPool.com.